All right, so uh, DevNet is a true developer community. All right, so that's the, the key. It's, it's our developer community where we do, first of all, starting with the APIs, we expose all the APIs for all the products that are public. One of the things that we're trying to do here with my, my team is to work on these APIs to make them better and make them more developer friendly, okay? Our, in the past, our APIs haven't been all that sort of developer friendly, if you will. Uh, and that's what we're trying to do, so that's key number one. Then the second thing we do is you see the developer evangelists that are here. Uh, we work on SDKs and tools. So all the tools and the resources is where you come to DevNet for, uh, for that. Then developer support. So we have communities where the community can help each other and all my people sit on the communities and try to answer questions there. But we also do, if you're part of the partner program or you want to sign up for a dedicated developer support, my team provides all the developer support for all the APIs that you're using. And then we sort of manage the community. We go out and we try to recruit developers, get people engaged in the community, uh, and get them excited about working with developers on all the various sort of APIs and things. So let me stop there and see if you have any questions. Make sense? Okay. But, but think of this as if you're a developer. It's the one-stop shop place to go find out about the latest technology from Cisco that you can develop on, okay? We don't do all technologies, because not all technology at Cisco you can develop on. But anything that you can develop on, that's what we do. So, very importantly, one of the things that we work on is the developer experience. So, uh, first thing, we expose technology out there, but do I want to use it? Is it even relevant for me, right? So what we're, what we're trying to spend time on DevNet, and remember, we're only a year old, so this is all kind of new, okay? It's, uh, what does this technology do? Can I get a demo of it? And more importantly, how would I use it? Um, and maybe how do I use different technologies together? And can you help me visualize sort of what, what can I do innovative with it, okay? And so we're spending a lot of time working on the DevNet site to try to get more and more information up there that will help developers figure out what this technology is and how I could potentially use it. When we first launched a year ago, we've only been around for a year, we just took all our APIs and threw them up there. I mean, that's a bit, it took us, it took us you know, three months just to collect the stuff, organize it, and at least allow people to explore it. And we didn't do any of uh, why you would use it or how could you use it. We just wanted to make it so people could find it, right? But now what we're doing uh, is stepping back, now that we've got a little bit more time, and saying how can you use it, um, and how do I, you know, what would I do with it? And then make it very simple, how do I sign up, how do I get in very easy, how do I get started, how do I use it, and how do I get help? Okay, that's what we're trying to do with the DevNet stuff. So, the whole thing we're focused in on is inspire, instruct, and inform. And Mandy, you want to talk a little bit about this? So, yeah, so getting all of those together. And we have a, um, you know, we're always trying to improve the process. So we're trying to put some, some standards together for all of Cisco so we can unify that experience and say, you know, all Cisco APIs try to achieve these standards so that they're easy to c use for developers and easy to find. So, um, so yeah, so this is something we're really working on. and. Um, Part of it is also the, the community of developers and trying to bring them together. So this is, um, this is one of the big measures that we have for measuring the developer experience and how easy it is. And it's the time to first hello world. So when you first find that technology on our site and you decide, I'm going to try it out, starting then, how long does it take you to get hello world type example to work? So we try to make this fast by having code samples, step-by-step uh, -step tutorials in the learning lab, which I think Ash is going to talk about, and then Sandbox, which gives you the infrastructure, the back end, so you don't have to install anything, you don't have to configure anything, you don't have to set up a server. You can just get the URL from the Sandbox and make your first call. And that's the goal. We're trying to get it down to less than 15 minutes for all the technologies. Um, some of them are there. Some of them have work to be done to get there. But you know that's that's the goal that we're trying to get to. All right, Ashley, you want to talk about this? Sure. 
Hey guys, nice to meet you. Thanks for coming. Um, so one of the, you know, she was talking about standards. So we, uh, we, had an, we have an effort that we're calling the DevNet API Center of Excellence. And the idea there is that we can uh, internally, for now, trade best practices around creation of um, APIs. Tip, commonly right now we're focused on RESTful APIs, but um, there's nothing stopping us from trying to obviously optimize client library APIs and you know, language specific APIs, that sort of thing. Uh, so as part of that uh, RESTful API standardization effort, we've, uh, we've made a decision to work with the, the open source project um, RAML. And what RAML is, is a description language of a RESTful API. Um, so there are other ones out there. Swagger is one. There's uh, IODocs has a thing that they do. But um, we like RAML because um, it's very easy to read. It's got some innovative uh, things around um, being able to encapsulate um, the portions of the RAML and, um, and, and it's open source. All Keep right, but, wa <laughs> but while we're here, talk ah, about a little bit about, about documentation. Okay. All right. um, so the documentation is a big, so big thing. Let, let me give you oh, a little precursor. So we, we've only been around for a year, okay? Um, when we, this little small team, came into Cisco and said, you know, let's get your APIs and gather all this stuff together, right? All our APIs were documented in PDF, like they were product manuals. That's not good, right? So, yeah, yeah. So it's kind of like how many developer programs do you go to where you go and get PDF documents? You don't, right? And so what my uh, evangelists have been working with, with our doc writers, is to convert stuff and Here's, here's yeah. what most of the stuff is going to start looking like right now. Yeah, yeah the, so DevNet Slate, it's, um, it's also an open source project. And what it does is it takes, gives you a way to easily see sort of the context and code samples on the right, uh, gives you the documentation in the center, and then navigation on the left. Uh, so it borrows from Stripe, which is a, a credit card processing API, which is their documentation is really well regarded. And um, the nice thing as well is that we can embed different languages. So you could have a Ruby example, Python example, just command line or what have you. And uh, so we really like it and we're trying to leverage it as much as possible so it's online available for you guys. Yep, and, and so this is a long way away from PDF, right, as you can see, and this, this is the stuff that these guys work on. Okay, thanks, Ash. Hey, thanks. All right, uh, so, so the DevNet portal is the place that you can go for all the tools in one area. Now, I think what's very important, uh, so a developer, why would he be interested in Cisco? What makes Cisco unique? And if you look at sort of the, the technology we have here, uh, the, the technology we cover, uh, you know, covers the, the entire stack of software, right? The OSI stack, right? So you can get to very low level APIs for networking and software defined networks. And you can go all the way up to the top layer and get collaboration APIs like click to call, click to chat, Jabber, and those types of things. But, but you can get APIs on all of these types of things. So think of it as a developer. If I'm doing collaboration, I can write a collaboration app that uses voice and video, but maybe I want to optimize that for the network, right, to do quality of service, because voice and video has to be sort of uh, prioritized, right? Well now, we're starting to expose all these APIs for developers, so just because you're a collab developer doesn't mean that you can't look at IoT. Um, or, uh, you know, another example, collab and in networking, maybe you need location APIs from CMX, right? So I'm doing, I'm doing this collab API, but I want to know location of where people are in a building, and I want to tie those two together and develop something cool and innovative. And this is what we do in our hackathons. So we do hackathons at Cisco Live all the time. So every time we do Cisco Live, uh, we have a hackathon. And then we do hackathons at our innovation centers around the world. And when you come to developer.cisco.com, if, you, you know, if you've got some developers or you yourself want to come, get involved in our hackathons because we expose many of these technologies. And the cool thing is you got 100 to 200 people, all like you, who are trying to figure out, well, how do I fit these together and what could I do something you know, innovative with it there? And it's a cool way to learn what the technology is, and it gets you thinking about how can I use this stuff together, and then you develop innovation and 
It's also a way to win money too. So. Can I can I add something? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So another thing about the hackathons is you don't have to be like some kind of amazing developer already to do it, right? The teams are made up of developers, of networking guys, of UX designers, of idea people. So they're they're cross-functional teams. If you're an infrastructure guy, if you're a networking engineer, you can team up with a developer. And those cross-functional teams are the ones that usually come up with the fullest solution. And then it's also a learning experience, right? So you may not be a developer, but you come there and it's a great place to try stuff out and learn from developers who are there. Likewise, the developers tend to learn some networking stuff from the networking people that are there. So it's a great coming together. Yep. So you know, the key message here is, I mean, go to developer.cisco.com, become a member, register, and you'll get information on when all this stuff's happening. When are the hackathons coming? What are they doing at Cisco Live? What new technology is coming out? So typically, this will be the first place where the technology will get posted for, for the ones that are developer friendly because uh, the, the business units behind those technologies want to get their information out to the developer community early. So this is where we start to expose it. Um, sometimes we'll expose it in a limited fashion. We'll ask for people who's interested, who wants to get in on a beta. But this is the place to go, uh, as opposed to trying to figure out on Cisco's website, what are they doing? You just come to developer.cisco.com and you find out what's the latest, what, what's, what's there for me. Then, uh, you know, you've got the main site, and if you click on a particular area, uh, what you do is you get into a deep dive uh, where uh, you can start to find all the resources and tools for a particular technology. And what we're really focusing on here is to get some sample use cases uh, and sample code. Um, so again, a big step away from PDF, we really want to help the developer get started, right? And you know, I know some of this stuff is basic for developer communities. This is all new for us. I mean, this is all brand new for Cisco. And that's what my evangelists are, are, are working with inside Cisco to say, come on, Cisco, get real. We need sample code you know, on this technology and, and to help your development process uh, along. Anything you want to add to that, Mandy? Or? The idea that we have with those big technology groupings is that we're trying to go with industry standard technology groupings, not just Cisco product groupings. And so if you're working in that area, those dev centers are your kind of one-stop place to find all the APIs in that area and all of those resources and community, you know, find events happening in that technology area, find blog posts, things like that. Okay. Th then we have our learning labs here. Uh, so on the various technologies, uh, we're trying to teach people, so once you get uh, enthused about a technology, you understand it, you say, hey, I want to start coding, typically you want to learn a little bit about it before. So Ashley, you've got some learning labs running in the back, That's and I right. think they're running right. They are. <laughs> they are, yes. good. Uh, tell us a little bit about those. Yeah, so the learning labs, um, the idea is they're sort of modeled after Code Academy and some of those online resources where you can learn how to code Python or whatever. So we've taken the concept, it's not quite identical to those, and uh, given you the access to APIs and just written tutorials to just step through all of the um, APIs for particular products. And for the code samples, like those ones there, we publish them on GitHub um, in the Cisco DevNet uh, repo. So you can grab them, try them out. It's, people really like it. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. All right, so uh, other things, you know, you'll see more videos and tutorials. People learn in different ways, some like learning labs, some like videos, so we want to do cool little videos. So, uh, you know, this is the type of thing we do. We do these videos, tutorials. These Coding 101 and Coding 202 classes are all up on our website. So you can see them here, but if you can't make to all of them, the, again, they're up on our websites, and uh, that's why we're out here filming them. That's why he's making sure we use microphones. Uh, so we have our community and for, uh, forums. Uh, this is very important. So we want you to engage and join in and be part of the community because this is where you ask your questions. This is where you engage with other developers. Um, we have people that monitor these quest communities so questions get answered. We have, Mike, you've got a full-time person that looks for unanswered questions and um, makes sure that they get answered. Uh, it used to be questions didn't get answered so people don't come back. Now they come back because they'll get an answer to their question. Cherie, can you come up here? And Ashley will hand you a mic. So, so Cherie knows everything about the Sandbox. Um. Everything about Sandbox. 
Um, yeah, so Sandbox is basically a set of labs, real labs based on realistic architectures with real Cisco equipment, real Cisco uh, software or firmware, uh, production level or sometimes pre-production available for your use. So we cover all of the technologies, uh, I think, that are presented on DevNet, definitely everything that's developer enabled. Um, We've got tools included in there, so if you need, you know, working in a networking lab, you want to run some traffic, we've got Ixia. If you're in collaboration, we've got call processing tools. Tons of features, it's better to see it live. We'll happily show it to you, it's right down there. Um, but use it, it's a great tool, a lot easier. It's about accelerating you uh, to develop faster, uh, as well as cheaper and better. And I'll, and I'll give a, a quick pitch for this, you know, kind of two things you want to think about. So. You know, if you don't want to build out um, your own labs, right, or you just want to get exposed, and even before you go, I don't want to know if I want to go deep with Cisco, this is a great place to go to get in, get into the cloud labs, because you can get access to all this technology for very low or no investment at all, right? And so you can start getting in there and get developing with the tools, and you get access to software and hardware. As you start developing um, uh, with Cisco, you now develop a product, and let's say you're an ISV or you're working with Cisco and you want a partner, one of the really hard parts of our, difficult parts of the program that we've had over the years is you have to go through certification. And this stuff was really expensive to certify because we had to use third party labs, you know, people had to fly across the country. And so we've taken our certification process, brought it up into the cloud, and uh, this year and just in the last month, we're lowering, we're cutting the price of certification by 50%. So just cutting it out so ISVs can come in, join the program, they say, hey, I want the Cisco certified stamp of approval, so I'm gonna go through the test. We move this test online in the cloud so you can access it, go through it when you wanna go through, and we're cutting the cost and minimum out the gates, 50% we're reducing the cost, because we're, we're not in the certification business. That's not a business I wanna be in. We're in the business of getting applications out there up on our marketplace uh, that are certified so our customers know that they're reliable. Um, and that's another element of the sandbox. Okay, so uh, sort of in summary, um, you know, we talked about the portal, it's the one place to go. Uh, we're very focused on the API, sort of this API center of excellence. We're, what we're really trying to help you do is to discover and learn, build and test in these labs, okay? Now I'm gonna take the build and test a little bit farther because there's even more opportunities with inside DevNet. So one is we talked about the cloud and the, and the sandbox. So if you wanna get into the cloud and get access to Cisco technology when you're building, you can get it there. But the next step is, let's say you're going really deep with Cisco, you're a passionate developer. We can take all this equipment, rack it and stack it and, 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 and get it together for you. And we'll give you know, good developer prices. But if you say, I have to build out my own lab, you know, it's gotta be on premise, don't wanna use the cloud, I'm a serious developer, I want it, I'm making the investment, we'll help you make that investment too. And then DevNet uh, is working on a concept uh, called innovation centers. So that the third area, so now I got it in the cloud, I can access all these people in the cloud, I come over here, I wanna build it, I wanna build it in my own place, but now I wanna go visit people. I wanna to go to an innovation center, and I wanna go meet Ashley, I wanna go meet Cherie, I wanna go meet some of the other technical people in theater where I'm at. And if I'm in Europe, it's places like Paris and Berlin, okay? So we're building those innovation centers. Think of it as our retail storefront. And this is where I can come in, I can meet the technical people, talk to them in my own language. I can actually work there if I wanted to. It's, kind of, it's an incubation center. So if I wanna work there side by side with the Cisco person, and then if I'm developing an application, let's say, you know, finally develop an application, this is a place where I can bring my customers back in. It's kind of local in region. And I don't have the money to build a demo center to, you know, kind of show Cisco and me working together. I can use these innovation centers to kind of come in and bring my customers in and do that, right? It, it, it's, it's uh, you know, I'm going to use this kind of consumer analogy. You know, Apple, you know, everything's on the web and they, you know, everybody said, well, why do you need storefronts? Well, they did. People want to come in. Yeah, I can get everything on the web, but, you know, sometimes I'd like to come in and talk to somebody and collaborate because I want to do this kind of face-to-face -face thing and actually touch the technology. It doesn't mean you have to use all those, but what we're doing and unique around DevNet 
is to try to give you that entire sort of tool chain and make that available. And then you guys decide whether you want to use it or not. But we want to make it available for you. All right. So we're here at Cisco Live Milan. We're at, we're at all the Cisco Lives. We will be here every year. Uh, we're at Cisco Live US. We're going to Cisco Live Australia. Um, so uh, we're only 12 months old. Uh, so we started in December of last year, uh, or 2013, obviously. We got our communities up in January. Three Sandbox came online in March. Uh, and in May, we had our first developer conference at Cisco Live. Uh, this is our first in, in the US, our first time in Europe. This is the first developer conference we've ever done, and you guys are here. Um, so we're just getting started. But as you can see, we've done a lot in a very short term. You know, what we had is a list of APIs and PDF, and that's all we started with. And this is what we built uh, over this very short time. So this team is tired. Um, but we're getting bigger, right? So we have 100,000 people that are registered up on DevNet, which we call our developer community. Since we started putting all this stuff in, we've had you know, a 40% increase in traffic, 38% increase in registered developers. Hopefully, you guys are all going to register now. And then active developers, we've increased by 47%. Because they're saying, hey, wow, they're investing in this thing. So people are kind of saying it's cool. They're finding it out. And they're getting engaged. And you know, no mystery. If you put some good stuff out there, people will come. And that's what we're doing. So in the future, uh, some of the things that uh, we're going to be doing in the future, so the idea here um, is you're going to be able to you know, get all the information, the APIs. Uh, you've got this cloud-based platform where I can test and develop it in. We've got certification testing now. We talked about that and certification testing. But now if you're an ISV and you want to get your stuff out to market, we talked about going to the innovation centers and doing it that way, but a more scalable way uh, for cloud applications, we're going to start first. So if you're doing a cloud application, we're coming out with a unified marketplace. That's a future, so you can't find that anywhere on the web. Hasn't really been announced, but over the next three months or so, I think it's Cisco Live US, uh, we're going to have this cloud-based marketplace. So you'll be able to develop your app, host it up on Cisco, and then offer it out to Cisco's cu customers or the market and get your app out there on, on this cloud marketplace. All right? So I think I am at time. Actually, I'm a little over time. Actually, I'm right on time. I got two minutes. All right. So I've got two minutes to answer any questions that people may have. Um, that was a lot in 30 minutes, but any questions? Um, it's I, only I, for the video guy. Yeah, it's fine. I, I was just doing a one-on-one -on -one, um, beginner session with RESTful APIs on, on Python, I think. Um, what do you do um, for, for beginners? Like, I mean, I'm probably a rather average good network engineer, but I'm a lousy programmer. So do you plan to do more for beginners in this field here? Like? Yeah, so we're, we're going to have our coding, we're going to have our coding 101 class. OK, in the area of SDN. We have a coding, coding 102 class. We ran out of time in the Coding 102 class. So there's enough material for a Coding 103 class. And uh, Mike was talking about something else. Yes? And they're on the Learning Labs, too. So yes, and the so Learning Labs. Yeah. Yes. So if you go to the Learning Labs, they're in there as well, online. Yep. So, so, so these Coding 101 classes you can take here. They will also be online, okay? They're meant to be free, um, and then I'm gonna get into the paid stuff in a minute, okay? Um, we have the learning labs, which are free and accessible. They're in the back, so you can go to them there. You can get them online if you can't get through them all here. So I think that's the big thing we're gonna do. We're gonna kinda do these free kind of classes. There also is a thing that we're doing with our learning organization as part of the CCIE training and all that. The, what our stuff is is to sort of get you started. Get you sort of, uh, you know, Think of this if, you know, in the United States we have junior college, right? Uh, it gets you kind of started, right? And then you go to the university. So the university would be our learning organization. Uh, and you can actually go through and get formal sit-down classwork on all this stuff, on especially SDN, which is probably an area of importance to you. And, uh, and so you can get classes on that, and, you, and there will be a certification associated with that. Now, that's a paid for because it's a sit-down class and so on and so forth. But there is going to be a certification in this area of SDN and programming, and that's in our learning labs. Uh, they have been here. They presented here, 
I sometimes are out there in the DevNet zone, but they're also in the world of solutions. So you can go up and look at the learning labs and you can say, hey, tell me what you're going to do to build on DevNet. Remember, DevNet's the free stuff. It gets you started, gets you sort of baseline, and then you can decide, hey, do I need more? Do I want, really want to dive into that, that stuff, okay? I think we are at time. Uh, so thank you very much, small group.